Hey, what's up and welcome on this very exciting tutorial that we're going to make today. Well, very exciting might be a bit of an overstatement, but it's going to be really useful. Uh, well, let's see what we're going to get at the end. As you can see, we've got these 3D Vimeo objects that are perfectly tracked on, on our 3D space. And that's cool because we used Adobe After Effects to create those objects. To do that, uh, we just used a plugin called uh, Element 3D from Video Copilot, and I'm sure that you've already heard everything from uh, this plugin uh, from uh, Andrew Kramer. But wait, there is more. Because how did we track our 3D elements uh, in our real footage uh, 3D environment? Well, we used the software called Buju. As you can see, we've got their website here. And Buju is really, really cool because as you can see here in the program, I've got my shot and as you can see, I've got my middle keyboard here. And if I go further in the shot, I can see that this point here is perfectly tracked on my keyboard. And that's cool. And there is more because if I go to the 3D view, as you can see at the end of the track, uh, I've got my camera movement which is represented in a 3D space and that's cool because we're going to export that back in After Effects we're going to select a few of these points which correspond to uh, my real 3D environment references as you can see here and we're going to export that back in After Effects and in After Effects here I've got my project if I go back here you're going to understand better uh, what I'm doing if I hide my footage here I'm going to hide element as well as you can see I've got my null objects here uh, and they move and they move because Buju has created my camera in a 3D space and Adobe After Effects has created its own camera as well and you can see here that I've got my camera which is moving in a 3D space and that's cool because these null objects here are no 3D references which were tracked on my real footage environment here and they're in After Effects so now what I can do is that I maybe I could create my 3D object with this new great plugin which is called Element and if I go back here I've got my objects and I can take my footage back here as well and now what I can do is to tell Element which position he has to take in this 3D environment that we have created and to do that I just have to take my null object position here and I'm going to give this position to one of my logos here as you can see my Vimeo logo uh, is in the middle of my keyboard so I'm going to take my position uh, of my keyboard I'm going to give that to my uh, 3D element which is here uh, in the plugin as you can see the the position just correspond to my null object here and I've just changed the Y position to that I've got the illusion that my 3D object is floating in the air and that's that's pretty cool and what I've done then is that I've taken this V letter and I've just make a few rotation and so that at the end of this tutorial uh, you've got the illusion that these objects are floating in the air uh, in my apartment and that's pretty cool that's what we're going to do in this tutorial so let's go okay so now we're in Buju and the first thing you want to do is to import your sequence so you've got the import sequence here on the left and just choose your footage and just hit open once you've hit open uh, you can maybe select a selected range uh, here we're going to work uh, for the entire sequence uh, it's a not interlaced file so we don't have to change anything about that but be careful if you're using your own camera to check uh, if it's a not interlaced ca movie camera it's a free move it means that we're not moving uh, via a nodal pan and in our case we're going to change the frame rate which is 25 frames per second uh, make the changes uh, according to your footage and just hit OK. So now we're in Buju and as you can see we've got our timeline here, you can go further in the shot 
and the first thing we are going to do uh, is that we're going to do use the track features function right here on the left and we're going to work for the entire sequence we're going to uh, make a few adjustments by hitting the advanced option here as you can see we've got a sub nail of our shot and we're going to um, adjust the sensitivity bar here we're going to make it uh, very high so that uh, Buju is going to be able to track more points and that's what uh, we're going to do just hit start so as you can see now Buju uh, creates uh, these red crosses all over the frame and that's because he's uh, making his calculation uh, for the shot so it's a bit long I'm not going to do anything but just see you at 100% okay so now we are at 100 percent and the next step is going to use the camera solve technique because at this point nothing has been done yet and the camera has not even been created in a 3D space so the next step is the camera solve function here and the camera solve as you can read here is that once track features have been used to defend wall fixed points in the scene this information can be used to track the location of the camera for every frame what this means is that Buju is going to use its own algorithm to recreate our real footage camera uh, using his own references and the references are these red crosses here so we're going to work for all the frames and we don't have any wide angle or anything like that in our shot so don't bother about these two options here and just hit start so this process is a bit long and as you can see at time uh, it's uh, fast in this shot but in some situations it can be really really long if your shot is is long so now as you can see we've got some of our points uh, that have been created on our keyboard I've got my middle key here I even got some of my points over there and if I go further in the shot you can see that these points are perfectly tracked uh, in our envir environment and what's cool is that if we go in the 3D view here you can see that these points are represented in a 3D space but wait there is a problem because as you can see the center of our 3D grid which is here uh, does not correspond to uh, our real scene geometry and to correct that we're going to use the scene geometry function right here on the left and we're going to make a few adjustments and we what, we, what we're going to do basically is that we're going to uh, add some references to in our 3D environment so that is going to correspond to the real 3D environment of uh, Buju so to do that uh, you're going to first hit on add coordinate from int here and we're going to first add the origin so it's cool because that's the default options that appears and you just have to select one point so to do this part you're going to go back to the 2D view and I didn't told you that to navigate in the 3D view you have to hit shift on your keyboard and then by left clicking on it you can move around uh, the 3D grid and if you right click you can then zoom in and zoom out by moving your mouse forwards or backward and so go back to the 2D view and here you're going to select one of your points and this point will be the origin of our 3D grid basically it means that it's going to be the center of our 3D environment so it's uh, an important point in our case we're going to take uh, one of my points here in my screens on the, on the background and I'm going to just see if this one is uh, cool in the 2D view if you hit shift and right click you can then zoom in and if you hit shift and use the middle button of your keyboard then you can uh, use the end tool so we're going to take the this point as the origin for our shot so select this point and then uh, click on select connect to selected and update coordinate frame so now we're going to add a next axis in our 3D environment so change here in the type menu uh, to X axis and you're going to don't do what I've just done here uh, because our origin is here but we're going to add 
another coordinate so we click on add coordinate from int and select x-axis so as you can see here two points are required and that's because we're going to make an x-axis in our shot so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to select two points that represent my x-axis so right here on my uh, background screen as you can see here I've got two points that are perfectly representing an x-axis so I'm going to select both of them by uh, hitting control on my keyboard then left clicking and so that I've selected both of them and as you can see in my scene geometry window here I've got my x-axis selected two currently points are selected two required I'm going to connect to selected update coordinate frame and then we're going to add, as you can imagine, uh, we're going to add a y-axis. So click on add coordinate from int, select y-axis here. And what we're going to do is that we're going to select two points that represent our y-axis. So I'm going to select these two points here that represent my y-axis. And I'm going to click on connect to selected, update coordinate frame and as you can imagine we're going to add a z-axis so click on add coordinate from int z-axis and we're going to define a z-axis and to do that you want to select two points that will represent maybe uh, the two extremities of your frame and by that I mean that maybe we're going to select one of our keyboard uh, point here which is going to which is going to represent our z-axis and we're going to connect this point to one of our origin point over there so hit control left click and select your two points and this is going to be a good z-axis so to require connect to selected update coordinate frame and we're going to add a plane to that we're going to add a z-x plane so add coordinate from int again and just select z-x plane the D explain would represent uh, the surface uh, and in our case the surface is our table so maybe we're going to click uh, again on our two points here that represent the Z axis and we're going to select a third one because as you can see here three points are required so we're going to select another one which we're going to be on the same X level and on the same Y level sorry so this coin here on my table, if I go further in the shot, you can see that this could make a good triangle using these two other points and that could be a good z-axis. Maybe we could take this one here, connect it to our middle keyboard here and with this one. And that will represent our ground in our 3D space. So that's cool. Connect to selected, update coordinate frame. Alright, so now that the scene geometry has been down, you can click on close here and if you go back to the 3D grid, you can see that things have changed a bit. It means that the origin now corresponds to my bottom screen on the background and you can see that I've got my camera movement here, I've got my keyboard here on the foreground and which is represented by this point here and that's cool because we're going to export everything in After Effects and to do that uh, the next step is just that we're going to use the export camera solve technique here so here we're going to save a file on our on our hard drive so in my case uh, I'm going to save that file here on my folder I'm just going to make the one for the toot here and that's right and it's for the world sequence it my it's my camera solve one I could have many of them after effects works like Maya so change the export type to after effects here it's a moving camera with a static scene it means that uh, any scene in our scene is moving uh, just the camera we're going to hit export flag tag tracks only and that's because uh, we do we're not going to export all of our points here we're going to hit cancel and we're just going to select a few of these points 
and these points are going to correspond to the null objects that we have in After Effects. So obviously we want something here in the middle of our keyboard, so select your point and you're going to rename that point. So in our case it's going to be called Keyboard Middle and hit OK and then right click on it again and flag it for exportation. So now this point has been flagged and we're going to select another one here on the right of our keyboard so that it's going to be uh, remember the letter V which is floating in the air so uh, select uh, the one you want, I've selected this one right click on it, rename and flag it for exportation and select as many points as you would like to have objects on your scene and so we're going to make another one here on the shift key in my keyboard and we're going to flag that for exportation so then click on export camera and click on export cap uh, export flag tracks only so that not all the points are going to be exported as null objects in after effects but just the one we've selected and we're going to make a few adjustments to the scale of our scene and i've made my own and maybe you could make a few adjustments of your own because I've uh, observed a few uh, problems in my scene which are not really important for this tutorial but maybe you should make your own adjust adjustments here so the null object size will be 1 comma 0 0 0 0 and the scale seen by will be by 100 maybe and maybe you could maybe you could use your own settings here so use a uh, default format just uncheck that make your own settings here and hit save so now we're going to go back in Adobe After Effects and we're going to create our scene so let's go alright so now we are in Adobe After Effects and the first thing we want to do is to import the file that we've created with Buju as you can see here uh, here is mine so I'm going to hit open and as you can see Adobe After Effects creates uh, its own composition if I go in that composition you can see that I've got my null objects and I even got a camera if I go further in the shot you can see that my null objects are moving in a 3D space and that's because Adobe After Effects has represented my camera movement uh, in its own 3D space if I select my camera here you can see that I've got a whole bunch of keys uh, that correspond to the position, the orientation, everything. If I select my camera layer here and then hit U on my keyboard, you can see that I've, I've got all these keys here that are represented in my timeline. And that's just great because that corresponds to my own footage. So now what I can do maybe would be to import my own footage. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to select uh, the footage I used in uh, Buju so here it is and once you've imported that you want to uh, uh, select it and you're going to uh, make it here in your composition so that now if you select maybe your keyboard middle not an object here you can see that it's perfectly tracked uh, on my keyboard so the next step as you can imagine is going to be just to create our 3D elements using the plugin element so here we go the first thing we're going to do is to create a new solid and we're going to make it pink we're going to call that element and it's okay so now we're going to go to effect video copilot element that's great so in my tutorial I'm going to use the Vimeo logo because you know Vimeo is a, is a great website they deserve their own tutorial and you can use even uh, your own picture of course uh, the first thing you want to do once you've imported your own logo uh, is to drag it into your composition and what we're going to do here uh, is that we're going to tell uh, element to use the masks that we're going to draw around the shapes of our logo and to draw these shapes automatically we're going to use the layer auto trace function right here which is really great in my case I've already made my presets uh, but just make your own settings here according to your own uh, picture and then hit OK so now if I select my layer here and hit M on my keyboard you can see that I've got some masks here that have been created and these masks are going to be used by element uh, to make uh, the extrusion of our 3D object 
and uh, it's going to be clearer in a second when I'm going to show you the results. So now uh, maybe I could hide this object and I just have my mask here, you could hide that by using this option right here and we're going to go back in element and go back to our effect uh, here and we're going to use the custom layers for uh, our extrusion so that's right here for the pass layer 1 we're going to use our vimeo.png file in my case here and now we can go to the scene setup and here we are in the scene setup so now we're going to hit extrude now that we have defined our layer and that's cool because as you can see our vimeo logo is automatic automatically extruded in three dimensions so now I really recommend you to watch Andrew Kramer's tutorials to make your own textures and make your own adjustments on uh, your uh, 3D element here. You know, the, the, f the main purpose of this tutorial was to tell you how to export from Bouju. So here I'm just going to select one of my brushed metal texture here which is nice maybe we could make a few adjustments with how the texture is mapped on our 3D objects and we're going to do to see what changes here. We could do greater, really greater with some work, but in our case it won't be our problem. So now that my element has been created in a 3D environment, uh, I'm going to change the environment uh, because we're talking about that and because in my scene as you remember the light is a bit yellow it's in my apartment by night the only light which is switched on is uh, my light and it's a bit yellow so I used the the studio warm blurred here uh, in my uh, example and I hit OK and now I can go back in my scene so I could maybe display my environment and I need ALT on my keyboard and then left clicking and I can see what it's doing and I could even change the lights to see how this could work and the cinema lighting in my scene was just great because I had my uh, screens uh, in the background and as you can see in the cinema lighting uh, preset uh, the lighting in the background is a bit blue and that's just cool it, it, it did correspond to my scene so then you can hit OK when you hit OK and you go back to element, as you can see, you don't see your 3D element uh, in your 3D space and that's because uh, the 3D element has been created to the origin of the grid of uh, Adobe After Effects and as you can see here we don't see that because our camera has been moved to correspond to the null objects in my footage. So we're going to define the position for our 3D element. So we're going to take the position of our keyboard middle uh, null object here. We're going to hit P to reveal the position. We're going to go back in element and in le element my Vimeo logo is in the group 1. So then I'm going to go to the particle replicator and I'm going to change the position using the values of my null keyboard middle position. So because because Video Copilot did decided to make the XY position in one parameter and the Z position in one another the only way you can do right here is to s to do that with your with your keyboard so in my case it's minus 3 comma 7 and so for the Y position it's going to be 9 comma 8 that's right and for the Z so as you can see now we can see the logo here and for the Z position we're going to use minus 202 comma 7 so now our object is here but as you can see of course it's bigger than uh, what we would like so we're going to go to the particle look here and we're going to decrease the size of our 3D object so that is going to be a bit better that's what we're going to do here I'm going to resize that to 1 actually in my scene so now my object is tracked in my environment if I made a quick RAM preview uh, it would be tracked. That's what we're going to do just right now. So I've just changed the the quality uh, that displays in my frame, and as you can see, the track the 3D object is not tracked in my 3D environment, and that's cool. Uh, I'm going to go back to uh, full quality here. So that's cool, and we're going to create a light in our scene. And if you create a light uh, with this technique, you won't see it in the 3D space. So make your, the light. Uh, you want it okay and you won't see it because the reason is that 
uh, Adobe After Effects uh, used the 3D position of the grid to center the light. So we're going to take the position of our keyboard middle here, hit Control C on your keyboard, reveal the position of the light, and then Control V. So now the light in is in the position of our keyboard, and maybe we could move it right here so that it's going to light our Vimeo logo. And what we would like to do is to change the lighting of the scene. And by that, it means that we're going to use one of our lights for this example, but Element actually has its own lighting system. So if you go to the render settings here, you can see that you've got this lighting menu, and we could add some lights. So we're going to add the cinema preset, because we've seen in the scene setup that it corresponded to uh, our scene. It's nice here, as you can see it's a bit bright. So now, at this point of your work, everything will be able will be about color correction and make this 3D object correspond to the lighting of your footage. And sometimes it can be a bit long, you're going to make few adjustments in your scene, but at the end you're going to obtain something cool. And at this point, what you might want to do would be to change the Y position for your video Vimeo uh, logo here. So go back in Element and go to the group where your 3D object has been uh, created and change the Y value so that your Vimeo logo is going to give them the illusion that it's floating in the air. And what you could do at this point is to change the position of the light that you've created so that it's going to fit in your scene. And you could make a few color correction on your element layer or even on the whole scene so that maybe you could create a new adjustment layer and you could go ahead and add a few color corrections. You can select your element and make a curves correction maybe so that you could maybe go on the blue channel, change that a bit so that it's going to fit in your scene. And I'm going to hide the, this light which actually is more bright than I expected. And I'm going to use this light but I'm going to change the position and I'm going to make a few adjustments on my curve effect here so that my object is going to fit better uh, in the scene. So I'm going to add maybe a, a bit of contrast here so that I'm going to add some shadows. And as you know, uh, Element doesn't cast shadows in your scene, but you can give the illusion that you have some of them using the ambient occlusion effect right here. So if you enable that, in my scene I don't think that we're going to see uh, a great result, but you could enable that in your own scene. And as you can see, uh, is it has added some shadows on the, on the object. But it's not real shadows, I don't have shadows on my keyboard, but at this point maybe you could forget the shadows and just be completely amazed by <laughs> what is what you can do with the element plugin. So at this point maybe we could make a quick run preview and see what's happening. So as you can see the Vimeo logo is tracked on my keyboard, it gives the impression that it's uh, floating in the air in my apartment and with a few adjustments about the lighting and everything we can give the impression that this element is uh, real actually and that's pretty cool it's all about 3D compositing and in my tutorial I used a plugin uh, which is called Mojo so what you could do maybe uh, is to drag your composition on another composition to create a new composition and that now we're going to use the effect called Mojo which adds uh, maybe some a cool look to our, to our video uh, we're going to see the change in a second and as you can see it adds a bit of uh, contrast and spirit to the video maybe you can go back to the track comp and we're going to to change the lighting by hitting AA you make the light options appear we're going to decrease the intensity of the light. We should change the position obviously because we should change the position to correspond to the light in our scene. But here in this tutorial uh, we are done. Alright, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. We're going to watch the result once again. As you can see we've got these 3D objects which are tracked in our 3D space. And that's pretty cool because we've done that in Adobe After Effects. We just used Buju to make the tracking at the beginning of this tutorial.
Alright, I remind you that I've got my YouTube channel on which you could subscribe. As you can see, I just have three subscribers. The reason is that my older YouTube channel is here and here are all my subscribers and my views, but I can't upload videos uh, with a length superior than 15 minutes in this channel. So that's why I use this new channel on which YouTube allows me to upload videos with a length uh, superior than 15 minutes. So that's cool. And maybe you could subscribe to that channel. I remind you that I have a also a Facebook page which is feeling pretty lonely. So if you like this tutorial, uh, or my work, uh, maybe you could click on like. I also got my website, thebarcode.com, on which you could go and you could see all my older projects in here. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we're going to see you back in a few days with another really great match moving tutorial uh, with another technique uh, using the plugin element. Uh, have a nice day and see you.